Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a loading screen with React just like this. Oh shoot. Just like this in just a few minutes. I'm going to use Create React App to start. If you haven't used Create React App before, you can check out my other video on that topic. It's linked in the description below. If you have used Create React App, you probably know that you need Node and NPM to install it. So I'm going to start off using npx create react app and I'm going to name it my app. While this is loading, I'm going to head over to Google. If you type in react spinners, the first result you're going to get is the one we want. That's the npm package page for this package. We can quickly just check out the demo page. Here you can see all the cool little loaders that we can get from this package. They have a few cool ones here. So the climbing box loader is cool. I think that's the one we're going to use in this tutorial. The Pac-Man loader is great. If you have a gaming related site, that one is superb. So again, here you can just find the one that you like the most. In this case, I'm just going to use the climbing box loader. You can also experiment with colors if you want to try out and get the hex values for different colors. I'm actually going to go for an orange of some sort, something like that maybe. Yeah. Now it's done over here. We're going to go back to the docs for the React Spinners NPM package. And I'm going to install it using NPM. Remember that you have to CD into your app first. So my app and then install your dependencies and packages. Now that it's installed, I'm going to start up the, the site. So I'm going to say npm start to get the development uh, server running. If you haven't used Create React app before, this is the basic content that you get from the app. Everything that you see is coming from the source folder and from the app.js file. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the app.js file to display the loader so I'm going to make an eight second loading screen when the component first renders. So to do that, I'm going to use two react hooks. The first one is going to be use state. The second one is going to be use effect. So I'm going to use state to keep track of a loading variable that is going to tell us to display and remove my loading screen. So first I'm going to create that const equals loading set loading use state and it's going to be false by default. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the use effect. The use effect in this case is going to serve as our lifecycle method and when I put an empty array here, it's going to run only one time when the page is rendered. And when the page is rendered, I want to set the loading to true. And after eight seconds, I want to set the loading to false. So to do that, in my case, I'm just going to use uh, set timeout. So I'm going to set the timeout for eight seconds. And when the timeout runs, I'm going to remove the loader. In the real world or in a real application, you would probably use the loader to load while you're fetching data from an API, or if you have a 3D object or model loading, or if you have a big video or something. The concept is the same. You have to track the loading itself. If I was fetching an API, for example, I would use fetch here. And when I get a response from the server, I would remove the loading. But in this case, we're just going to set up a set timeout. The set timeout is going to be, yeah, eight seconds. I think that's going to be long enough. It's probably a little bit too long for the average user, but for you guys to see it, eight seconds is nice. So inside of this one, I'm going to set the loading to false to turn it off. Wait, what did I, what did I do wrong here? I have an error. Oops, there we go. So yeah, that's all the logic we need. And then we actually need a condition. In the JSX, 
I can say that if loading is true, then I want the loader component to render. And if it's not true, I want the header to a render with all the content. We're just going to get the component the loader component in a second. Uh, we're going to head back to the docs here. They are importing the component. So I'm going to import the component and then I'm also going to import the or I'm going to copy and paste the component over. Now I have the component as well. So the loading right here tells the component when it should display. This is using this state loading, but we only we're using a hook so we can use it as a normal variable. So I'm going to set loading there. I'm going to set the size down a little bit to about 30 probably. This is if you want to override the core CSS within the component. Usually you don't have to do that at all. So I'm going to remove the CSS here. If you want to experiment with the CSS over override, you can check out the docs on that. Here you can see some docs about using CSS and specifying it for your needs. I want this orange color, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to head back here and give it the new color. If I save everything, everything should work. So let's head over again here and check it. And there it is for a brief second. There you see, that's not the loader I wanted. I wanted the climbing box loader. So I'm going to take the climbing box loader. I'm just going to replace all of these with the climbing box loader. Hit save and there we go. There's the climbing box loader. Everything looks a little bit scuffed right now. So I'm going to head back. The reason for that is that because in the app div right here, the size with background, everything is set to an element within the app header. So I'm actually just going to set the background to the app itself. And to center everything, I'm going to display its flex. I'm going to justify content center. I'm going to align items center as well. And I'm going to set the width to 100% of this page. And I'm going to set the height to 100 view height. We're just going to take up the whole browser. Now you can see that it works. And here you can just experiment with the colors, experiment with the sizes. And also if you want experiment with the CSS properties. So this is how you can super quickly set up and configure a loading screen. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. If you like this, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I post stuff like this every week. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.